good in the community. Um, so much to the fact that where you know he ended up losing his life trying to help others. And um, you know, for for me, that's uh, the greatest thing that you could do in, in your life. Um, and so he was a guy that I, I, I look I look to, someone that uh, I admired highly, and that I knew that. Um, you know, baseball, you can use it as a platform to do so many good things. And that's what I try and do day in and day out uh, when I play this game. It's, uh, it's a very fun game to play, but there's so many other things and opportunities that you have out there where you can, at the end of the day, you know, maybe we're a little better place, even if it's by you know, helping one person. You know, it's, uh, that, that's what I try and do. He taught me that. What are your thoughts on the number of free agents out there? Some, some big names right now with spring training. Beginning next week. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's still a lot out there. And that, that's as a part of the game. Um, you know, some guys feel like you know, they're they're worth a little more than maybe what they're being offered. Uh, I'm not sure, but um, you know, that's that's just a part of it. It may be the hold up, hold out right now, but uh, you know, it, I think it's just all about being fair, and that's what that's what these guys are probably thinking about right now. There's a lot a lot more people out there. And uh, some, a lot of guys that I know, a lot of guys that I played with, that are still out there waiting. And um, you know, hopefully, you know, be, they'll be able to meet in the middle, get this thing done. Because uh, at the end of the day, you just want to play baseball. And you know, hopefully that that, that gets taken care of. So uh, you know, you hate any of that any of that to get in the way of, of the game you love. So um, yeah, I just hope that gets taken care of, and you guys are out there. And, ready to go. Andrew, uh, you came from one of the most beautiful ballparks in the majors, and now you're here. Can you compare these two? <laughs> They're both beautiful. <laughs> They're both really, really beautiful. Um, I don't want to be wrong here, but I, I think that the architect of something, he had something to do with both ballparks, Nancy <laughs> Park and here, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so um, this, this ball, PNC Park, beautiful. Uh, you know, anyone who's ever been there or ever seen it, it it's amazing. As a baseball player, it can be very difficult there to hit in the first like few innings because of the amazing view. Yeah. As um, an announcer too, I can tell you. Yeah. You get sidetracked. Yeah. So um, you know, you got shadows, you got sun beaming off buildings, they're all in your face. You're like, all right, these first two at bats are not gonna be great, you know, so you got that part, but um, you know, other than that, the, the, the stadium is amazing, but this stadium is by far, you know, amazing as well. Um, so um, I'm looking forward to playing out here and being here and calling this home every day. Uh, it's it's going to be a lot of fun and uh, yeah, it puts a smile on my face. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. uh, what's it going to be like to share the outfield with um, the outfielders with the kind of skill level of Pence and Jackson and others? Yeah, definitely. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun being out there with those guys or you know, Pence. You know, like him playing right field. Uh, you know, he's 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 learned a lot out there playing right. Uh, so yeah, I've been picking his brain a lot. You know, Talking to him about right field. You know, Austin Jackson. You know, we were born, uh, not born, but drafted in the same draft class in 2005. Um, you know, we we played in the Aflac -like All American game together back in the day, back in high school. Um, I saw this guy jump out of the gym. And, you know, dunk a basketball, and I was like, why are you playing baseball? Um, which he could have played basketball if he wanted, but he chose baseball. Um, and that awesome, because now, you know, I get to call him a teammate. So, um, yeah, you know, I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to playing alongside all those guys. Uh, we're some guys who, you know, we've, we've done a lot in our careers, um, and I, I believe uh, that's all that's going to help us all out, you know, just being able to learn from each other, learn from our ups and downs, and, you um, yeah, you know, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun out there. Do you see Hunter Pence making that transition pretty smoothly? He's a right fielder in most of his big league career. Right, yeah. Uh, yeah, I see him making the transition. You know, I think the hardest thing, um, you know, playing and moving from one position to the other, you know, you're being comfortable in one spot, uh, but it's, it's just the angle of the, of the way the ball comes out the bat. You know, learning the swings, left-handed to right-handed, you know, just making that, that, that adjustment. The way it comes off the bat is just different. You know, me playing center field basically my whole career, um, you know, I, I have the best view. And you know, I, I know where the ball is going to be pitched, the location. I get to see where the catcher sets up. I get to see a lot that's going on. 
Uh, so off the bat, I know where the ball's going to go. I've got a little more, uh, I can kind of go before the ball is even you know, hit. Um, right field and left field is more reaction. So I think, uh, yeah, the biggest adjustment for Pence from going from right to left is just the trajectory, just the way it comes off the bat. Um, balls are going to be more, you know, kind of diving and going downward, hooking, as opposed to fading. Um, so, yeah, he's going to have a lot of that to learn. I'm going to have a lot of that to learn as well. Uh, but I think uh, that's what spring training is all about. You learn those things, mess up. It's not great, but spring training is where you learn. So when the season starts up, uh, you know, it becomes uh, almost second nature. How well do you know him? You're an all-star with him. Uh, and what do you think of him as a ball player? Yeah, I, I, I love I love Pence, man. You know, he's a guy that, you know, I watched over my career. You know, even when he was with Houston, playing against him quite a bit when they were in our division. Um, just watch him go about his business. You know, he, he was always a threat, always a guy that, um, you know, is very unorthodox with the way he does certain things, but he does it um, at a very big league level. Um, you know, people always, you know, pick on the way he takes his dry swing before he goes <laughs> out. And, and then next thing you know, he, he crushes the ball, you know, over the wall, you know, or the way he throws the ball, but he throws it right on the money. You know, it's like he, he goes about, about his business the right way. He's always ready to go, and I'm looking forward to, to that and playing alongside him. You know, he's, he's an awesome, high-energy guy, and you know, I'm looking forward to, to playing alongside him. You mentioned that your dad gave you the advice to always be an athlete. What kind of running back was your dad? Uh, yeah, my, so my dad, um, you know, he was a big uh, high school running back. He went to a little uh, small college in uh, Tennessee, Carson Newman, and uh, he was running back there. Uh, I believe they they won their uh, championship his his, his uh, first year there, and um, yeah, but I, he couldn't pursue that anymore because he had a newborn, and that was me. <laughs> so he had to come back, and uh, yeah, throw that away. Not just throw it away, but you know he had to take care of something that was a little more important. And uh, happy he did that. <laughs> and uh, but yeah, yeah, he's a big running back, big football guy. He's a guy that used his mentality of being a football player, putting that on the baseball side. So a lot of stuff that I learned, I learned it a little differently, I think, than most baseball players would learn. Uh, more of a in, like an intense, more of a, uh, a football workout on the baseball field. So, yeah. but at the same, at the same day, um, I think that helped me as a kid growing up. Um, for instance, you know, one of the things that he used to preach when I was a kid was home plate was my house. And uh, my sister was in that house, my mom was in that house. And when he pitched the ball, you don't want anybody to get in it. So he told me to hit that ball so no one would get in my house. So he would tell me to protect my house. So he would always say that all the time. And as a kid, I was like, all right, I'm not letting anybody get in my house. Uh, you know, so, you know, that's, that's that was my mentality. And I think that that helped me. You know, as, as a kid growing up, because he knew what fueled me to make me better. You know, something that could kind of, you know, make me emotional that it made me better. So um, that's the way that he used he used those things and those, you know, all those little tidbits, and you know, it made me who I am now. You know, you were a top football recruit in high school. Did you consider going that path, or was it going to be baseball for you all the way? Yeah, I, I for a stint I did. Um, you know, but I, I only played in my sophomore year. Mm -hmm. and I, I ended up. I ended up tearing my ACL, my MCL, playing football, playing football, and um, I missed my tenth grade year of high school baseball, and um, so that pretty much was the the axe for me. I couldn't play it anymore. I wanted to, Dad didn't want me to. You know, he's like, you know, you stick with baseball, and um, yeah, I, supposedly uh, I get drafted, you know, and my high school football coach calls me, and tells me Miami has a, an offer, and uh, I was like. No. <laughs> you know, I just decided first round. I'm not going to play football all around, you know. But, um, yeah, but football is very fun. It's, it was an exciting sport. I really enjoyed it, you know. I really loved it. Um, but, you know, I, I think I did all right with the choice. <laughs> and you wear number 22 here. Uh, you wore that in Pittsburgh. Did you wear that growing up? Was there a nut where did you just get issued when you came to Pittsburgh? Is it, what's the story behind 22? Because it's obviously a revered number here, yeah. having been worn by Jack Clark and Will Clark. How, how, did, how, did, it, how did you come to number 22 be your number? Yeah, so, um, you know, backtrack a little bit. You know, growing up at first, 11 was my number, really, <coughs> number 11. 
Um, but I love that because my uncle, that's what he, he played in high school, and I looked up to my uncle a lot. So I, I wanted to be a number 11, so I was in for quite some time. And I always grew up watching Kenny Ripley Jr. He was 24, so from you know middle school on up, I was 24. Um, you know, through minor leagues, I wanted to be 24, just because of Kenny Ripley Jr. Um, then when I got to the big leagues, um, 24 was taken. Uh, pitcher had it. Pitcher, boy, pitcher. Had it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, so. In the minors or when, you got, when I got when I got to the big leagues, twenty four was taken. I couldn't take it because the pitcher had the number. I, was, I could not figure that out for any reason. <laughs> Who wears twenty four as a pitcher? And then the next thing you know, uh, uh, twenty two was in my locker. Xavier and eighty had just left, got traded to the Mets, I believe, and I had twenty two. And I was in my locker, so I didn't ask for it, but it was there, and. I had it ever since. I was like, okay, well, with 24, when, I, when 24 is gone, if, if that picture of him it happens to be gone, I'm going to take it, you know. And then you come to the Giants, and, where it's like and then I had, I, you know, a year passed, my rookie year passed, and uh, that 24 was, it was available, but I kind of had made a name for myself with 22. A couple, I saw a lot of people, a lot of kids wearing it, and I thought, man, that's kind of cool. So I, I, I kind of stuck with it. And, yeah, that's that's been it. You know, very, very uh, excited to for them to you know give me the number here, for me to have that number. I know there's been some greats in the past, and that, that's won that number. So um, I'm I'm uh, you know humbled to, to still be able to wear it, and uh, because it, it has become a little bit of part of who I am. Was it? I mean, very warm. Tom Gorzolani. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Tom Gorzolani, yeah, number twenty-four. Yeah, but, and very. Uh, you think it's. Batter side stuff, or was it also dimensions? Is it big? Is it play yeah. big? You yeah. Know? I mean, it plays really big. I mean, what did you, what did left, you learn over time how to deal with that? Yeah, left center Pittsburgh is is huge. I mean, I'm I don't say I compare it to right center here, but mm. um, it plays as if it's like that. I mean, you, you hit a ball to left center. If you don't crush it, it's not going out. And so there's been plenty of time you hit a ball. I'm like, God, it's gone. And the next thing you know, it gets caught in one trip. Did you have to adjust to that? So you didn't necessarily have to, I wouldn't say adjust to it. It's just uh, that you have to know when you hit a ball there, put your head down and run. Because, you know, if you're looking at it and watching it, most most times it's probably not going to go out. Mm-hmm. You know, the next thing you know, you're standing up at second base site. And if I could have been running, it could have been, been a triple. So mm-hmm. um, you learn that over time. Our grass was, uh, it's a little thicker. You know, mm-hmm. they say when they say it's a pitcher's ballpark, I mean, in that aspect as well. Interesting. You had balls that, you you know, try and get a hit up the middle, you know, shortstop get across, make a play. Mm-hmm. And then you'd be on the west, you'd be on the west coast, and you'd be like, man, that would have been a hit easy. You know, mm-hmm. you know you'd be playing in, you play here, you play in L.A., you play against the Padres, you hit a little chop up the middle, it gets through, but it's because of the surface. Yeah. Right? The weather here is different. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you had those different things, are, and then of course the shadow. The shadow, in, in a sense, is is it is tough um, as a hitter, especially when the summer gets gets closer. That sun sets behind home plate, so you got ball, you got you got that beaming off big buildings behind mm-hmm. you. So you're seeing, you know, Bumgarner up there like this, left-handed, and you know he's throwing right out of that shadow, you know, right out of that. So mm-hmm. there's a lot of things that that happen. Mm-hmm. Man, I mean, you can ask a lot of the Giants players that come here. They, they'll tell you. Yeah, you know, you yeah. learn all the yeah, they're like, it, it's difficult. But, you know, I've played here with Shadows, and it's uh, nothing compared to Pittsburgh. Right? Uh, right. You know, it's so there's a lot that goes on there. But so, you don't want to change your game too much in response. You just sort of no, just not at all. Learn you know, it. Continue to just to be who I am, play the game, mm-hmm. the way that I play it. Um, I, my power is left center to right center. That's mm-hmm. where I hit my balls, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, I know I might have – some balls that I normally would hit out in Pittsburgh, probably not gonna be hits here, but they'll be doubles or triples. Mm. So um, yeah, I love triples, and uh, <laughs> so I'm, look, I'm, I'm looking forward to just being able to hit some balls out there and mm. really, really get these legs going. Okay. How did you meet Maria? Um, so um, long story short, uh, she she worked for the Pirates. Um, I got called up to the big leagues. I went and worked the camp. Um, within the first week of me being called up, she was she was at the camp as well. Uh, just met her, shook her hand, and um, 
after that, you know, we were just randomly running each other outside the ballpark. Um, and so, you know, I mustered up enough in me to actually be able to, you know, ask her out. And uh, she, she shut me down. And <laughs> <laughs> she shut me down like five more times after that. But I remained persistent. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, we, we kind of went from there. She finally said, yeah. And, uh, yeah, it was, it's history from there. Why did she shut you down? Did she tell you later? Oh, well, you know, the whole, you know, baseball cliche thing, you know, it's just you're a big league guy. She didn't know anything about me, you know. She's like, I don't know anything about you, so I'm not going to just say yes because I don't know much, much about you. You know, I know baseball players. I know how they can be. And, you know, so it was more of that. She was just watching out for herself, very independent woman, very smart. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, she just wanted to make sure. But uh, I think once she got to know me a little more, the more she was, she became a little more comfortable, and uh, yeah, happy she uh, she's able to been there. She's she's put up with me now, quite some time. Now, so. Yeah, it's, it's been uh, it's been fun. Definitely out of my league, but I'm I'm mixed. I did it. <laughs> I did it.